back at it, back in the, the Double RT Boxing Show. I'm your host, Mr. A. Thank you for tuning in the Ready Ready Talk Boxing Show. Episode 6. You know, it's what it is, you know. Um, hopefully the show catches on and more people start to tune in and you guys watch these because I know the show is based a high percentage on just fight breakdown and predictions. People like to see just quick things. But I think the show is uh, has something good to offer for you boxing fans. And I'm a fighting fan of myself. I watch YouTube. I watch, I watch what's out there. And um, I would like to think the show is a little different for us boxing fans. So on today's show, uh, if you don't want to give a thumbs up, uh, if you're a new viewer and you don't want to subscribe right now, I get it. But if you are a subscriber already, I hope you have hit that thumbs up. You subscribe person, you know, support your show. You, you subscribe. Now hit the thumbs up, support the show. You new viewers, I get it. You could do that at the end of the show. Now this is what is in store. So you have an idea. Do I even want to be at the end of the show, Mr. A? Shut the fuck up. You know, but today we're going to do some boxing news. We're going to, since, um, you know, I, I do have a job, so I'll, there's a lot of fights I want to cover. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do a, quite a few breakdown and predictions on here that ones that I couldn't catch up to and lead up to. So we're going, we're going, uh, we're going to break down and predict, uh, Bacoli Hunter, Chantel Santana. We're going to do, uh, what else on the 13th? We're doing... Maroda Brandt is the 20th. We're doing Acosta. And I forgot who he's fighting. But we're going to do Andrew Acosta. The WBO. Um, the 108 champion. You know. So we're going to do about four breakdown predictions. For the 13th tomorrow. So I can catch up. Hopefully some of you viewers. Who are just always tuned in. To the show for breakdown and predictions. You come on here so you can see. I did cover those fights. But this is where I'm heading for. Um, the show to be going. This is how I always wanted the show to be. A everyday. Or not everyday. Just about. More boxing talk. Than just quick breakdown segments. I'm still going to have the segments. I'm going to have Mr. A's thoughts. But. That my idea show was always to deliver a good show filled with this. So get used to this is what the show is going to turn into. And then from there, we just hopefully, you know, as I as the show show grows to get more viewers, more subscribers, the show platform just gets better. But this is kind of a basis of the show. Now, right here. The topics we're going to be digging digging into to start the show off. Thank you for your time and support. The hot topic is many of them, but uh, the Al Heyman has got himself a new fighter by the name of Manny Pacquiao. Now, this I seen has rubbed people yay and nay. You know, the old man Pacquiao getting with Heyman. People said it should have been done a long time ago. And we all know why this signing was. It makes the uh, May Pack 2 good to go. Good to go. Now, none of us know what the hell Mayweather's talking about his surprise. And uh, I think he says he's going to do something in Tokyo, Japan. Now, I don't know if it's a fight. Is he, open, is he opening up another Mayweather's uh, gym? I know he has something that... Uh, is in Russia. They be having fights there. You know, it's a small little venue, but they, they it hosts his fights there. So Mayweather has some type of program out in Russia. I know it's a training facility, but it also um, is a home of fights there. So I don't know if he's gonna if, if that's his new project because uh, I don't know how much of you guys are into Japan boxing. If you're just a nice. USA fan base that's watching the show but you know new viewers you know you'll learn that the WRT boxing show covers boxing worldwide the best I can I, I find fights and we talk up and down the rain, rankings 1 through 15 we talk about them and so and I as a fan as, as the show has been growing for this year and a half I became a big I'm becoming a big fan and a strong fan of Japanese boxing you know 
great fights. They always give ad, uh, they always give attitude in the ring. Vicious shots, tremendous skills, punch selections, very great. So I think Mayweather might be picking up on that. And it's not might it might not be a fight he's talking about in December. He might be opening up another Mayweather uh, gym, you know, like a facility, not actually like a boxing gym, but like a, a a hosting arena, like a like I said, like he has in Russia. Now. That that being said, there's there's that rumor that's all over the internet, burning like fucking, you know, pigs and fucking mud and shit, whatever the saying is. That uh, Broner and Pacquiao, Broner and Pacquiao, that'd be a nice build up to get the buzz back again for Manny and Mayweather and Pacquiao. Because yes, even though it just came, oh we're gonna fight again, we're gonna fight again. You see some of the mixed reviews it got. Now if Mayweather goes off and does his little thing in Tokyo whether it's a tune up fight or not it's Mayweather's Mayweather he knows how to get attention now if he's fighting another country there it's it's going to be worldwide Mayweather fighting another country but if Manny Pacquiao fights Broner and beats Broner that that's going to draw some big huge buzz back on Manny going into a nice Mayweather fight saying hey I beat Broner you know Broner's as of right now, even though Broner don't let his hands go, don't but he still sells. He still gets people's belief in that he could win a fight. You know, because it's the same conversation. If Broner can let his hands go, Broner's going, and it's the same thing this one. If Broner can let his hands go, it's gonna be a dangerous ass fight for Manny Pacquiao. Remember the offensive weapon Broner used to be until he was, until he took that dumbass one forty five one forty seven Maidana fight. Broner was a beast. We all know that. That motherfucker used to just rush you and beat the shit out you. And do it like... Humiliate. He, he just humi- uh, just humi- humiliate you. He was a beast. You know, he beat the shit out of Pauly. Uh, he tried... Who who else did he try to beat the shit out of? He really just stopped letting his hands go against... Uh, he didn't let his hands go. To me, it was Porter. Porter is when he really... Stop letting his hands go. Madonna, he tried to fight us. Madonna was a beast, you know. But Porter's when he stopped letting his hands go. Like he just, he just got fucked up. So if Broner and Pacquiao fight, that's a great fight. I think it'd be a great. Uh, it's going to be a great paycheck for both of them. Now, if Broner happens to win, shit, can you imagine Broner and Mayweather? You know, I don't know how if the press conferences. Will be, they'll be mouth worthy, but will it seem a little staged? You know, people kind of thought uh, Deontay Wilder and Fury, Fury was kind of, uh, was it real shit talking? Was it just stage shit talking? But Broner and Mayweather, I think, would be along the same thing. You know, were they really, because they had, they got public beef before. Now they're gonna bring all some of that shit up, you know, to sell the fight. Bring some of this. Hey, you're saying all oh, this? I'm for you've been suicidal. Shut up, man. I'm the one who has to come in to tell you it's gonna be okay. I had to pat you on your back like a big brother. You look up to me. You you want to be me? Oh fuck you, 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 you broke Mayweather. You know, I know your secrets. You know, you can't keep a woman. You know, they they be talking all this shit. So the build up has great opportunity there. Mayweather sells. Broner sells. But Pacquiao and Mayweather, like I said, I don't care what you think. That fight will be successful. I'm going to watch it. I would love to see part two. I, I, I love sweet science, you know, and I'm a Mayweather. I'm a Mayweather fan. I like, hey, the dude's a legend. You know, you can say what you want about him. Like, I'm not talking about his watches. I'm not talking about his cars. How can you not want to see a legend in the ring? You know, two legends... I don't care. If you're a boxing fan, you want to see two last legends. As long as they can move, Pacquiao still still looks like he got it. Mayweather still looks like he got it. Are they fighting the young lions right now? No. Yeah, it sucks, but that just happens in sports. It's not the only sport, you know. It's you know basketball. When you get old, you get a you you play with them as a team player, but your minutes go down. You don't quite play with it. You you come in on the second squad with a shit squad, you know. You're a man in boxing, and it's common knowledge in boxing. The age people always kind of fight their age brackets as they go out. You know, you rarely see an old man just fighting lions. You rarely see it happen. So that is going to be a great fight. Moving on to the next topic, we're going to do some middleweight talk in here. 
is going to start with the vacate, vacated WBO middleweight champion belt from former champion Billy Joe Saunders. Like I said, on the last episode, we were talking about the interim battle between Demetrius, Demetrius Andrade and uh, Walter Kautando. Was it Ka? Was it Ka? Ku Kutan Duka? Yeah, Ku Kutan Duka. Walter. <laughs> for for the easier term, please let's just go with Walter Duka. <laughs> you know, can we just Kutan Duka? There you go. I guess we gotta try that. Walter Kuan Duka. You know, we were talking how that was for the interim, and the only reason that was for the interim title because Billy Joe was fouling an appeal. And the WBO was like, okay, here's the stripping papers. Okay. We're going to not fill them out then. But as the article in Boxing Scene said, the guy, the president, he already said, like, we were already filling the, the stripping papers away. We were, we we're getting ready to strip them. But I guess Billy Joe must have heard it because WBO must have knew something about the appeal. Because like I said, they were already filed and stripped in papers. He was going to be stripped. Billy Joe was not going to get his license, and I think the WBO knew it. I think Billy Joe knew it. So instead of just getting stripped and really looking humiliated, by the, not only by PED test, but getting stripped as well, he tried, he stole, he chose to keep some dignity and some good reputation by saying, hey, I vacated the belt. I, I, didn't, I didn't get stripped. I vacated it. So, but this WBO is still talking about Perhaps uh, suspended him for six months for the suspension and for the again just a quick little touch why he the whole suspension the failed P- PED the PED he took was illegal I mean legal it's good to go over in UK up until fight night they don't test for it you know they, they don't test for it in the off season they and you could I guess they don't take test for it up until on uh, fight night they test for it in vada it's just a no-go on the united states it's on the list 24 7 year round you can't take it uk you could take it for a period of time so it was a loophole but since the fight was in united states massachusetts are like you know the fights in the united states you signed up for vada just because you're in the uk doesn't mean you're not following vada rules get the fuck out of here Boom. So, so boxing license is not granted in Massachusetts. WBO was about to strip his ass, so he vacated it. Now, that being said, and him opening the opportunity for Demetrius Andrade and Walter Kutan Dakwa, you know, Kutan Dakwa, it gives the opportunity for the zone to get some serious fucking leverage now you see Eddie Hearn matchroom box in USA he has Daniel Jacobs going against on his last fight of HBO he's going against uh, Sergey Devonchenko. that's going to be for the IBF middleweight belt Demetrius fighting for the WBO middleweight belt now if Demetrius and Jacobs both wins that's going to be two middleweight belts on the Zone Network. You figure most likely after HBO, Daniel Jacobs is going to be a The Zone fighter. Dude, I am tired as fuck, but pushing it out. And um, and then you have the other two belts with Canelo. Canelo, the 160-pound champion, is going up to 168 fighting Rocky Fielding. So that leaves this middleweight division going to be a strong-armed by the Zone Network. That's if they win. If if those if the B side of those fights win, you wonder. Derevchenko, I believe, is a PBC fighter, so he's gonna obviously he's gonna go for with Charlo. If Derevchenko wins, he's going with Charlo. That's they're gonna fight. And if Walter wins, does Eddie Hearn working out that he gets a zone to fight deal for him, since he's part of this deal but I don't see why that will be considering that this is a mandatory Eddie Hearn is not really offering a contract for this fight so but it, going on the strong hunch that everyone I think believe that both A side fighters are going to win um, Dimitri and and Daniel Jacobs 
Strong arm middleweight with the zone. You got Canelo going up. Charlo's going to be out in the loop. He has no fights. You know, there was a little rumor, or not rumor, but, you know, suggestion that how Willie Monroe kept pushing for the fight. What other fights is really big names out there for Charlo? Just off of the top of my head, you have, you figure, Billy Joe is going to be suspended. Then you got Andrade and Walter at number one and two. You got Daniel Jacobs and uh, Sergey Devonchenko. Sergey just for who? Toriano Johnson. Uh, Jacobs just for uh, Shaki. Uh, then you got Canelo just fighting Triple G. And then you have uh, Rayota Marada taking on Rob Brandt. So you got you got a. Uh, the previous opponents that's probably the, the big names in middleweight so considering they just they, they last for the title challenger now so you got Shalucky Chiriano Johnson Marota Brandt and uh, Triple G those are the five I guess middleweights where you can go if is Charlo gonna fight one of those five you figure Turiano Johnson, it's possible he's on PBC. Uh, GGG, I don't see that fight happening. Rob Brandt and Marota, they're tied up together. So you got Turiano Johnson, and I'm not gonna leave you guys the finger, so we're cross out Turiano Johnson, and that leaves with Shalucky. So it's, like I said, just by a quick little rule of next level competition Charlo might fight Willie Monroe is like a, a safety net like I said you you take the five names on the next level the, the names that just fought the previous title hunters Terriano Johnson and Shalucky it's going to be one of those two or Willie Monroe those are three names I think would be a safe bet for a safe bet for um Charlo and like I said and then to top it off not only do Canelo going up to 168 to challenge Rocky Fielding I didn't fucking think about this I didn't think about this one he's going to be at 160 I was like I said the last episode we discussed how the WBC title is vacated and you got Advil Yardman taking on Darrell the fucking big Mexican showdown. Roberto Ramirez. Can you imagine him and Canelo? How fucking big a Cinco de Mayo fight that will be? Or, um, or it'd have to be a Mexican Labor Day September 9th fight. That would be a huge fucking event. Put that motherfucker in the Staples Center. Don't go to Vegas on that one. Go to either Texas, Dallas Stadium, or Staples Center. Huge, huge fucking event. That 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 is a fucking event and a half. Roberto Ramirez and Saul Alvarez, Texas or um, Los Angeles. Mucho grande, mucho caliente, mucho caliente. <laughs> Mucho caliente. And so that's that's real real big right there. That's did, I didn't see that one come, but there is a fork rolling into that. Jesse Hart. Jesse Hart ain't gonna be no easy lay down for Herberto Ramirez, you know, because Jesse Hart came back strong in that first fight, and Roberto Ramirez doesn't look like the fighter who's gonna figure out things that just make the second rematch easier even though rematches are usually easier for someone it seems like in the styles it seems like heart will do the corrections and have it easier this time about you know that's just how i feel on that one but like i said for Berto ramirez and canelo mucho caliente un grande <laughs> you know and then going on we got some nice heavyweight talk you know 
we have Dominic Brazil being granted by the WBC, finally being granted, being acknowledged, announcement stamp, announced, qualified, certified, legit. Dominic Brazil, the mandatory, will be next in line for the winner of Tyson Fury taking on champion Deontay Wilder. Winner gets Brazil. Now, so that that is officially legit. Brazil has his fucking mandatory. The world always heard it, and now we fucking really, really know. Then... As we talked about last episode, and it's all over the internet, the WBC has made a second mandatory opportunity. They said, hey, Dylan White, you can fight Luis Ortiz for a second mandatory opportunity. You know? And Ortiz, you know, we know Ortiz called him out like, hey, fight me on the wild card. I got a spot. Dylan's like, fuck you. Fight me on the 22nd. We're working on a spot. <laughs> you know? So Luis Ortiz like, fuck you, I call you bluff. I get off this big old pay-per-view car. I go over there. One, they don't actually got a spot locked in. They're like 80, 70% with the 22nd. And now Eddie Hearn is saying the mass public wants Shizora. Shizora, we don't, they don't, the people don't want White and Ortiz. They want Shizora. They, they, they saw how uh, much of a knockout banger that first fight was, and they want to see that grueling rematch. You know? But if Shizora don't uh, come to terms, if we can't make a deal, it's a possibility we could do White or Brazil. It's a possibility. I mean, uh, Ortiz or Brazil. Possibility. Now, I, I just call, like, fuck, dude. It's... I, I like boxing. I like boxing a lot. I give everyone their own fair credit. Shit on them when they have to shit on them. And just like that, when when Match Room USA first announced, I thought it was great. I thought because Eddie Hearn he puts on great cards to mediocre cards, just like every promoter. You know, I I, I made I made the Worlds Collide preview saying on paper every fight was good, good matchup. It wasn't a hot card. It wasn't a shitty card. It was a nice, solid card. Besides the Adamac, it was just Adamac was there for sick ticket sales. And if you saw the fight card, you know the fight card was what it was on paper. A solid. Every fight was solid. It was very competitive, solid fights. Nothing, nothing had banger. Nothing shitty. Just a solid fight. The only shitty fight was the shitty one on paper. Now that being said, Eddie Hearn, the mass public doesn't want. Ortiz and White. And you got Shizora coming out saying no one wants it. I'm the money man. And we we might get the fight done the 22nd. It's it's going to be bullshit if this fight doesn't get made. You know, does the public want Shizora and White? I think they would have been happy with it. Because they loved the first fight. Everyone loved that first fight. They beat the shit out of each other. And they would have gladly watched the second one. Because up until like three, four weeks ago, they were saying, the rematch is already happening. It's taking too long. Where's the Shashara or White rematch? Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? And now Eddie Hearn is playing on that. You guys wanted it just a couple weeks ago. It was all fine just a couple weeks ago. You know? And now that Luis Ortiz kind of fucked up shit by publicly calling their bluff. Okay, you want the 22nd? Let's fucking go. And I was like, oh, shit. Damn. What do we do? And now, the, and now the public's like, oh, shit. You know, like I said, the, pub, the public would have easily taken Shizora over, I think, Brazil. Even though Brazil is a nice mandatory fight and it gives you a mandatory spot, there would, people would have said, like, hey, hey, go, go get the mandatory spot. But people would easily have taken Shizora White rematch. They would have easily have taken that if Ortiz would have never thrown his hat out there. And now that is going to put Eddie Hearn in a real bad match. Because, I mean, a real bad spot if that fight is not made. Because I said, one, you had your fighter, Dylan White, call him out. Say, come fight me on the 22nd. 
you don't have a spot, you don't really have anything penciled in, you don't have a fight with Shizora even locked away. You guys haven't even negotiated. You negotiated, but nothing's locked in. So to all of a sudden, go out and get terms after you call Dylan uh, Ortiz out and say, come fight me on the 22nd. When he tells you, I have a fight on a bigger stage. So you want him to come off a bigger stage to your small stage. And he says, okay. And now you're saying, oh, well, uh, that fight's bigger. You know, Chizora might make more money for you, but in the long run, fighting Ortiz is just gives you everything gives you bigger United States credit gives you a shot at Deontay Wilder and it's gonna give you more money than UK in the next fight people will fucking flock if you beat Ortiz you might even become like a fucking you can beat Ortiz you can have your chat at Deontay Wilder or fucking uh Joshua you take your choice man take your choice I can't believe it man like can't believe that that is actually a chance of not happening after he got called out on the bluff and like I said and going into more heavyweight news Parker is looking for a comeback and he's looking for a guy who's going to give him a fight you know but they're not mentioning no names they're like go fight Brazil Someone go fight fucking Brazil. Parker, you want someone who's going to be credible fight to give you a comeback? Go fight Brazil, man. Go fucking fight. You know, he, he's a he's a young prospect. But go fight Nathan Gorman. Go, you know, but he, he wants someone who's going to not just be there to get knocked out. Go go fight Nathan Gorman, man. Go do something. Go do fucking... Jo- Joy Joyce. Go fight Joy Joyce. Well, hey, you got room on that Deontay Wilder card? But no... You want to take a home pay-per-view. You want to milk your fans and try and say you're on, on a comeback. And then uh, you got uh, Martin Bacoli, uh, Alunga, taking on Michael Hunter, the former cruiserweight who went all 12 rounds with uh, Usyk, Alexander Usnik. That is a nice mixture of young prospect heavyweights. And that's going to be our first breakdown and prediction. We're going to get into that fight right now. Now, Bacoli, who's uh, the, the Frenchman, I believe he's a Frenchman. He's coming off his uh, training camp with uh, Joshua for the Prevecan fight. He's 11-0, and 0, 8 KOs, and he is fighting for the vacant IBO this is the Intercontinental Heavyweight. So he, he was the Continental Heavyweight champ. I, I remember he... Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, dude, I could sworn he was already a champion. What the hell happened? He was the Continental. He beat Backos for it. And he must have just gave it up. They didn't want to pay the sanction and fees for it. So now he's going to fight Michael Hunter for the Intercontinental. You know? You know, that means... you. Maybe he's trying to get that United States land because that's what the intercontinental means. You can fight continent to continent. Constant, continental champion means you take it from country to country, you know, country to country. But when you get intercontinental belt, you could take that from any country, any small country within a continent, or you could travel across a, a land, uh, a sea of water to another continent and fight an, an, another country. That's what the intercontinental is for, you know. Those continental belts usually stays on one continent and fights uh, throughout the countries of that continent. Inter- intercontinental, you can take it from one continent, travel across the land of water. So you, you, you could be in UK and you could fight an American, Michael Hunter, as intercontinental. You know? So you got Bacoli 11-0 with eight KOs coming in here with 26 rounds of experience 73 knockout ratio he is what is he is he a I believe he's an orthodox fighter he's a Dominican Republic of the Congo I saw an interview he's like excuse my English I'm a French man so and then Michael Hunter is 14 and 1 
nine KOs, except that one loss was against Usyk. 74 rounds of experience, a 60% knockout ratio. Age 30, he's 6'2", and he's 7'9". If he's 6'2", with, I mean, a 79-inch reach, Bacoli's got to be a little bigger than that because Bacoli was standing pretty taller than him at the the press conference in a way. And how does this fight break down? It's going to be, I think it's going to be interesting. I think these guys got, these guys have fast hands for a big man. Like I said, Hunter was a heavyweight during his, I believe, amateur and Olympic days. Started off as a heavyweight, worked himself down to lose weight as a cruiserweight. Now he's going back up. Bacoli is like a kept secret at prospects right now. And, you know, is no one's really wanting that work, you know. So fast, the hand speed, I think that even when it comes, I think it's going to be interesting because the height, and I, I think Bacoli punches harder, but they they both have fast hands. They both do good um, combination and variations. Uh, Hunter is a good jabber up and down the body. Bacoli is a jabber, jabber up and down the body, but he mixes in some strong ass hooks and uppercuts. It's going to be, like I said, offensively, I think there's going to be some good fireworks in here where the where the interesting part of the fight is going to come is going to be uh, Hunter's footwork. Because the fact that he's going to be a shorter man and I think lacking, I'm not going to say lacking power, but not the harder hitter, it seems. Will Bacoli just be able to walk him down and just bomb away on him? Or will Hunter use his cruiserweight speed and pick some angles and pick them off it's going to be a good fight because defensively I think Bagoli is just a in your pocket uh, pass some punches off catch him with the elbows Hunter actually tries to be a little finesse with the waist but I'm going to go with on this fight which I think should I announce the winner of my prediction now or should I go over all the predictions and then go at them at the end I'll try that one and you guys can leave a comment should I go with the prediction of my fighters all at the one time at the end so tell me how you like it or I'm just gonna do it right now because the first episode I, I just did a preview prediction boom move on to the next one that prediction is over Bacoli and Hunter that was the prediction our next prediction we're gonna go on uh, Chantel Chantel Kumaran I believe that's her name Cameron, Chantel Cameron. The IBO. Now you know she's you know Cyclone Cards, the IBO is very big. That's why I Martin's fighting for the IBO Intercontinental. Chantel is the IBO female lightweight. She's taking on Diana Santana. 36 and 9, 15 KOs, two losses, uh five, five and a half, 67 inch reach, 33 years old. Chantel a 7 and 0, 5 knockouts, 71 knockout ratio, 27 years old. Uh, and Di Santana's been in there with some names. She's she lost all those names, but she has the experience of fighting some names. You know, she's she's fought uh, Sanchez, uh, Hannah Sanchez. She fought uh, Eva Walster, Amanda Soriano. Uh, who else she fought? I thought there was one more person that I recognize, but those those three names are some pretty big names in the female uh, boxing world. But she, like I said, she lost all those names, and with the seven and zero Chantel, IBO champion, I'm predicting the same streak's gonna continue. I don't think uh, Santana's gonna win this fight. She's a she moves around the ring and she throws very wild shots. She's just and she, I won't say very wild, but they're not crisp. She throws them almost like a oh uh, god damn man! I did a run today and I'm fucking tired. She she throws them kind of like a, a with a with a look of desperation to almost every punch. And she, and she holds a lot and then she just runs around the ring. What I'm looking for is the fact that Santana is a mover 
I'm looking for Chantel to use her ring generalship, cut her off, and just blitz her. Because the girl can survive. Diane, San, Diana Santana can't survive. She, she's been, she lost nine, but two only by knockout. So that lets you know she's, she's surviving. She knows how to survive. Um, Amanda knocked her out in the eighth. And her other knockout loss was way back in 2005, a ring RTD. So she went from 2005 all the way up until 2017. She went 15 years without being knocked out. So can Chantel do it? You know, can she knock her out? within a almost a year and a half span. You know, Chantel has, I think, the harder hitters, the, the, the crispier combinations, the better feet work, about better body work. Now, Chantel needs to be uh, take her time work on her defense, the head, you know. She, she likes to stand right in front and just eh, eh, throw some hard-ass one-twos. Hopefully, she works on that head thing, but uh, the interesting part in here is I want to see, can she stop someone who knows how to survive? That's what we're walking. That's what we're talking about there. Going. So we covered um, Chantel. We covered um, Martin Boli and Hunter. Next, we're going to go on to Angel Acostas, the WBO World Light Flyweight Champion. And then I'd seen i seen Angel Acosta fight one time. And that was against uh, Koshi Tanaka. Because I was I was doing research on Tanaka. And the reason why I'm covering Acosta is because his division has one of my favorite fighters in it. Ken Shiro. Shiro, however you want to pronounce his name. The Japanese light flyweight champion. Now he's taking on Abraham Rodriguez, 23 and 1. Abraham Rodriguez with 11 KOs and one. His one loss is he's been KO. Age 23 years old, orthodox fighter, 113 rounds, 48, 46 knockout ratio. The biggest name on his list. It's really some Mexican fights. I don't recognize anyone. And unless you're just a Mexican following fan, you you would know what the fight's down in Mexico. But like I say, he's taking on he's taking on Andrew Acosta, the 18 and one with 18 KOs. All his fights have been come by KO. So he's 28 years old. He's the younger man, 5'4", 63 and a half. No, actually, he's the older man. Sorry, five years old with 95 knockout, 84 rounds. And if you see his one loss. Andrew Acosta against Tanaka, you'll see, you'll see what you need to take the fight to him. You need to break Andrew Acosta's mental will. Cause the dude is gonna come and just come with punches, come at you, come at you, come at you. And all the fights I've seen him up and from Tanaka fight, I start researching him for this breakdown. The fights I've seen, he comes at you. He comes at you. Nice punches, mixes up the punch selection well, it's good speed, good pop in his punches. He's a much better fighter going forward than he is backwards. I know I know that's with everyone, but really it shows a difference with uh, Acosta. And that's what Tanaka was able to do, able to take the fight to him and make Acosta move around the ring for defense purposes so he couldn't set his feet. And I don't see... Abraham I don't see Abraham having the even though Acosta uh, has a wide guard like a wide peekaboo he swings his hands wide he's, he's a looper puncher Abraham just doesn't have the the oomph and the grit I think to push him back he was getting pushed back by uh, Sol Juarez and Juarez is nowhere on Angel Acosta's level. So if, if Juarez could give um, Abraham those problems, I think Angel is going to easily come in here and knock him out. 
So I'm going with still WBO light flyweight champion. And moving on to our last prediction, we're going to go with the middleweight that we talked about earlier, challenging the WBA regular or WBA world middleweight champion, Marota, Rob Brandt. Again, his one loss against Jurgen Berman in the WBS tournament. Rob Brandt is 23 and 1 with 16 KOs, 28 years old, middleweight orthodox fighter, six foot and a half, a 70 inch reach. Got hand speed, uh, good punch selection, okay with uh, slipping punches. You figure if he's down there, I believe he's still training with Derek James. Uh, down there with uh, Earl Spence and uh, Mel Charlo. Oh, excuse me. I'm tired of shit again. And I got I to gotta go to work right after this one. It's going to be a hard day at work. And uh, he's taking on Moroda. 14 and 1, straight out of Japan. 73 inch percent, 73 percentage, 32 years old, 6 foot. 72 so they got about the same same stats but that two inch reach is gonna be in the favor of Maruda Marada there you go Marada I'm sorry and that's big cause when you could you could say it was the size of Berman uh, Bergman Jurgen Ber- Ber- Berman that was fucking with uh, Brant but it was a jab he could not get past that jab and uh, Ryota Murata is a jabbing machine. You know, he's gonna hold, he likes to hold you in place, then bow, here comes that hard ass right hand. Got the Japanese left kidney liver shot. It's gonna be a good fight. Uh, you've seen it in uh, Nadam, he will follow a mover around. He likes people to be very stationary in front of him, and he controls it one, two, one, two, one, two. And I don't know if Rob Brent is gonna be able to move like that. For 12 rounds, I'm going with the uh, Maroda. I think it's just gonna wear him down with the jab and the body work, and I think he's just gonna be landing the flesher shots. I'm going with a unanimous decision on Ryota Murata. And that being said, because he, he he knows back of his mind, there's a chance he could fight Triple G. You know, because like I said, it's open. Where's Triple G? Like we mentioned all the before, there's the five next guys. The, uh, you got Turiano Johnson, Shalucky, Brant, Murata, Triple G. These two are in a fight. Uh, Shucky, Turiano Johnson, and Triple G. Where's Triple G going to go? Who knows what those other two guys are going to do? Who knows what Charlo's going to do? So one, I think one of those two guys and Charlo are going to get together. And then there's ESP and Bob Aaron talking about how Triple G could fight Murata. That there's so much fucking money there for Triple G and Murata to fight in Japan. So much money. So if Murata knows he has a career high payday in the loom right there in his eyesight, he might really go out there and just try and take care of business, try and take care of work on Rob Brain. Don't lose your uh, your meal ticket on your next fight. But those are usually the fights people fuck up on because they're not concentrating. So that's, a, that's why it makes that fight very interesting. But again, I got... Uh, Ryota Murata, a unanimous decision. I think he's just gonna pick Rob Brand apart. Rob Brand's gonna make it there. He's gonna have some. He's gonna have moments and rounds, maybe a round here and there, but I don't think he's gonna win the fight. So that is the boxing news. That is the breakdown and predictions. Now there is one fight that's coming up on the twentieth that I do want to see. You know, I, and I'm, I'm going to do a, probably a breakdown segment for this one. And also, don't forget, folks, to come in to finish. The, I know and now everyone's like thinking, like, what what's uh, what's left in October? October 27th, Kub, Kubat Pulev and um, Huey Fury, October 27th. That fight is out there, folks. So do not do not think October is going to end right now on this weekend but, uh, after Crawford. No, like I said, on the 20th, you got Andrade, then you got uh, Marota and Brandt, and on the 27th, you got Kubrick Pulov taking on Huey Fury, but 
also on the 20th this is a fighter I like um, I was hoping he'll be in the super lightweight uh, the 140 uh, world boxing super series but hey can't have them all I guess he, he's not that popular and I get it but I'm trying to see where's he at the super lightweight let's I know he's ranked let me get the, let me get a spot before I shine light on him number five WBC and that all he that's all he is he's a he's a mover he's a jabber uh, I think he could make some interesting fights and possibly upset some of the 140 people and that one I am talking about is no other than the 20 and 2 IBO world super lightweight champion Muhammad Mamoon Mamuni 20 and 2 with two knockouts out of 20 wins he knocked out two people so I'll let you know like I said, the dude's a mover and he can box. I like the way he pumps up the jab, stabs the body, does some feints. 164 rounds with a 9% knockout ratio. Eh, yeah, I know, guys, I know. For, coming out of France, 31 years old, southpaw, 5'10", 71 inch reach. Now he's taking on. So if it's a good chance, some of you viewers will not even know who any of these guys in the fight are. Muhammad Mamouni is taking on uh, Frank Petitjean. Now, I did one fight of uh, Petitjean, and we covered that fight against, uh, I believe we covered the Scarpa, Andre Scarpa fight, right here on the WRT Boxing Show. So we have a little bit of knowledge of him. That's an interesting fight. I'm going to do a segment alone breakdown of those two fights, the Huey Fury and the uh, Mamouni and uh, Petit Jean. So the Petit Jean is the 20th and uh, Pe Petit Jean taking on uh, Muhammad Mamouni for the IBO Super Lightweight is on the 20th and the heavyweight showdown between the, for the IBAF number one mandatory between Huey Fury and Kubert Pulev is on the 27th. Now that we did the boxing news, we did our breakdowns. If you're a loyal subscriber and you are and you're in tune and you're tuned in and you're enjoying the show, just make sure you hit that uh, that thumbs up button. You know, I'm giving you a thumbs up. Bring it on back. You can see my eyes. I'm getting tired. I gotta go to work. I'm gonna hate the shift. But you know what? Boxing comes first because I love that shit. I love boxing. I do the show for you guys. This is a fan driven show coming soon i will be going live i will be going live i i'm, I'm not going to announce it yet you, I, you're going to see some you're just going to see some random pop-up mr a show lives i want to get the hang of it you know so i and the fun part of the show going live is going to be uh i'm not going to have many people in the conversation with me it's just i don't have a big show this i only got 527 subscribers so i'm pretty sure i'm probably gonna be getting like maybe five to ten people per show but watching uh you guys come in eventually is going to show me that you are in you're, you're enjoying the content of the double rt boxing show not just the breakdown and prediction segments not just the mr a segments but the actual show and this is kind of what the show is going to be about live i'm going to start off with boxing news you know then after after the boxing news we, we'll spend maybe five to ten minutes uh, not on every subject, maybe some subject, you know, we interact, then we move on to a fight, you know, maybe do one or two fight predictions, talk about those fights, you know, why do you, why do you think this person, I answer some of your questions about that, then we move on to another fight prediction, another fight prediction or just whatever, and then we end it with a Mr. A's thoughts, and then after the thoughts, we we'll, we'll do some more interaction, and then the show will be over. So it's going to be talking, interaction, talking, interaction, talking, interaction. You know, that's that's the format of how I have it planned out. Not just sitting in front of the camera and not talking boxing. I'm going to be. This is this is what the show is. It's not just sitting there talking in front of a camera and not saying shit about boxing. Now that now that that is over, we're going to go into a nice Mr. A's thoughts. You know, sometimes Mr. A's thoughts are. 
out of the box thinking, questioning something. But this one's just a nice, simple Mr. Ace thoughts. You know, in doing all this uh, researching and boxing and watching fights around the world, I come across some things and what I like in boxing. I like watching, the favorite place I like watching fights are the country of Ghana. I like watching Ghana fights because the, the crowd, that music they play, Mr. Ace thought is going with the best place if I was a fighter, I would want to fight in Ghana. What do you guys think of? Do you, do you guys hear that drum music they be playing in Ghana? That that music, that little warrior music they be playing during the fights. I think that is cool. I think you know. What do you guys think? What's a nice, cool environment? You know, uh, shit. What? There's so many out there in the UK. You got you got some people in Ireland. You got some people in the fucking UK. The crowd, the fans get into it. They you know they sing some Japan crowd. They're very appreciative. You know, J Japan crowd would be nice and quiet. But you you know you do like you you slip like three punches. They applaud you for defense. You know. Japan is so appreciative of science, the sweet science, that it could be the opponent, the visitor, and they will start like, dude, like, we got to give it up. Daniel Roman went to, went to Japanese, beat the champion, came back to Japanese, defended his belt, and they're like, dude, this guy, he came to fight, he didn't do shit. And then Japan, I don't know if they love him. But they definitely appreciate Daniel Roman. They clap for him because they just see his will, his heart. It goes out. Now they hate the fuck out of Louise Neri. They hate. They hate Louise Neri. He's banned from. They banned it. And I get that cheating motherfucker out of. He beat our champ, and then he fucking he beat our champ on drugs. Then he comes back and comes over weight and beats our champ, our ex champ. Get him the fuck out. We, he's no longer allowed in our country. So Japan is a crazy ass crowd. They they appreciate you, but they will boot you the fuck out. So. I, I like I like the Ghana, I like the Ghana crowd, the music. I like the Japanese appreciation. And like I said, this up and down in the UK, there's a a lot of a lot of loud crowds. Argentina crowds are pretty good. They they get pretty good into them, you know. Argentina loves their women boxing. Good lord, do Argentina love their women boxing? God damn. You know, like I said, we in our last episode we covered Jessica Bop's fight. So, if you're a Jessica Bop fan, like I am, you know she's a grad badass. And uh, Marcella Una, I think, is coming up on the 23rd or the 27th too. So I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a segment fight on her, the IBF champ. And then another thing I learned in hearing this Mr. Ace thoughts that I'm talking about is rings, boxing rings. You know, I like the different color mats. I think that is awesome. Uh, I'm asking you guys, what, what, what match? Because I used to just, I remember when I first started seeing different colored gloves, I thought that shit was so fucking cool. Like, oh shit, yellow gloves, green gloves, black gloves. When, when fighters start wearing different gloves, I thought that was fucking awesome. But then I was like, oh shit, they got different colored mats? You know? But I, I like the yellow gloves in Thailand. I like I like those yellow gloves. But my favorite mat, you know, I gotta get, like I said, and. I like the red mats in Russia. Russia be having those red boxing mats. Uh, the WBSS, that black mat is nice. I like that black mat, I like that look. And I gotta give it up recently. Recently, I thought the zone ring, the mat, the ropes, I thought that shit looked very crisp. I thought I, that was a clean, crisp looking ring. So, but as of right now, I like the red mats in Russia. And then I like the the WBSS black mats and but I, I like that clean white look of the zones ring. I think that is real clean. You know, it's I, I, it's going to be weird that one day when someone just gets a real blood fucking fest match and then it starts bleeding all over the fucking ring like a UFC fight, you know, or an MMA fight. You know, I don't watch that shit so I'm not going to talk about it. But like an MMA fight. You know, so that was my Mr. Ace thoughts talking about boxing gloves, talking about rings. What do you like? Why as a fight fan, 
do you like different color gloves, different color mats? You know, do, do you do you like the the long ring entrances for some countries, or just short ones with no entrance? Like, is there something that other countries do that you like? And fight, like I said, whether it's the ring mats, gloves, whether it's uh, introductions, leave it down in the comment. Like I said, that was the Mr. A store. This is the Double RT Boxing Show. Hope you are entertained. New viewers, I hope you see where Boxing Talk is now at. Hit that thumbs up. Become a subscriber. All you loyal viewers, hit that thumbs up. The Double RT Boxing Show. I'm your host, Mr. A. Take my ass, get ready for work. See you, see you, see you.